I followed my dreams and opened an antique store to have adventures and spend time as a family. Sometimes you have to climb a mountain and open some new doors to find the treasures inside. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey guys, it's Alex with Curiosity Inc. So today was kind of an interesting day. Uh, I got a call from somebody, I've been to their house uh, a couple times before I actually bought some stuff, but they had uh, a whole bunch of old books and things and, and we ended up buying a pretty big collection. But the one thing that I thought was cool and I didn't want to uh, do it without bringing you all along the trip here is that they had a trunk that uh, belonged to, I think he said his um, grandfather or great grandfather and he was in World War II and the trunk has been sealed up since basically just after the war. I don't know whether it was you know, 46 or 51. Anyway, the thing's been sealed up pretty much since then. It's his old military footlocker. So we are going to uh, dig through this live on camera for the first time in 60, 70 years. Who knows what's inside? So it does have some good weight to it. So I know there's something in there. It could be clothes. If it's an old uniform, that would be cool. It could be books. It could be, you know, garbage. <laughs> uh, so who knows what's gonna be inside? Hopefully no, uh, no weapons or anything like that, but we will see. We're gonna open it up on camera here. So we're gonna go through it. My father-in-law's here and uh, the kids are gonna be around. So we're gonna go through this thing and see what's inside. So this is the trunk. I can get my door open on my car here. I had to bring the old ambulance out because it's such a big trunk. This is an old uh, World War II foot locker. Um, it was in the family since the war. And my understanding is that it hadn't been open really since um, about 1946 or seven, or just after the war anyway. It's been locked up a really long time because they didn't find the key for it. Well, uh, a locksmith got the uh, lock open on us and we are saving it. I know it seems crazy, but we are saving uh, going through this to do on camera because I think it'll be more exciting. It could be a bunch of laundry, could be who knows what, but we're gonna open up this mystery box and see what's inside. So it is about a day or two before Halloween, which is why we have bats in our house. <laughs> we don't normally have a rat problem, a rodent problem in here, um, except for our little dog who's rat sized. Uh, but we, uh, I've got the kids and my wife and my father-in-law are here. There's Dave, you've probably seen him in some videos. We are here because we're gonna unpack this trunk. Now you might ask yourself, why would somebody um, sell a trunk without going through the contents first? Um, here's the thing, um, I paid a thousand bucks for the privilege, it's tough when your wife is right there, uh, I paid a thousand bucks for this thing for the privilege of opening it without knowing what's inside. Um, that was the number that, uh, that got me this trunk. It is heavy, like I said, so hopefully there's some good stuff in there. So you guys ready? Yeah. So earlier today we got the lock um, undone, so we pried that guy off and it's open, but we haven't undone the clasps yet, so we're gonna... A little bit stiff. There's one. Oh, it's really stuck. There we go. That's two. Okay. You guys want to help me up? This is a little bit stuck. Oh. Oh, okay. Is it really sticky on that side? Do you want me to come over and give you a hand? Let me try this side. Maybe okay. it's full of honey. Ugh. As long as it's not a body, we're all good. Hey. There we go. Okay, uh, oh, well, there's wrong. paperwork. Let's hope it's full of money. Uh, all right, let's have a look, guys. Okay. It's been bamboozled. Uh, well, that's a pretty old map. Arrow City. Wrigley's official Arrow City map of Greater Vancouver, 35 cents. Population 418,000. What's the population of Vancouver now? Like four or five million, something like that? Comment down below. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, Toronto Visitor Guide. Yeah, this is, Now we don't know exactly when this thing was sealed up last. Oh, he did a little traveling. Hagstrom's map of Manhattan and Bronx, 1946 edition. Okay, so this is right after the war. That's a good sign. Subway elevated, elevated streetcars, that's kind of cool. Okay, so let's see what the first folder is. I hope it's money. What do you hope it is? Money. money. Yeah, I know, what do you think, Dave? It's gonna be interesting. Yeah, let's just hope it's a thousand dollars interesting. Hey, that's mine. It's blank paper. Yay! Oh my goodness. I can use that for drawing. Oh wait, hang on. Oh wait. Somebody did do drawings with it. Oh. Let's just bring this over into the light a little bit. A cartoonist. So this is dated. Let me just see if I can get the light on. 
Yeah, that's a little bit better. I had to turn the light on. So this looks like it's wartime art. So is the, <laughs> he's chasing the girl. And then comes our major and it's signed. I'll have to see what that signature is. 1945, February 8th. It looks like there's a bunch of them. So somebody might have been a, a bit of an artist. And did some drawings. Well, we can dream, can't we? Oh, I see he's mopping the floors. So it looks like February 8th was a busy day for this guy. He had time to do a bunch of drawings. Some of our invasion plans are missing, sir. Never mind who stole my pencil. Battle of Rideau Canal. You know, it's funny, these little um, comics and cartoons kind of tell a story of the time, too. Let's see. We girls are tough. We aren't afraid of anything. Eek. And what's she afraid of? A mouse. Uh -oh. Ha ha ha. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's pretty good art artwork. Yeah, he's actually got some talent. So there's the soldier. And the other ladies aren't very happy. What does it say? What's she got that we haven't? That's funny. Oh, I see. He gave her kind of a funny nose. So I guess they're not supposed to be very, very attractive. Well, it's a bunch of little drawings. That's kind of cool. I mean, um, if this artist ends up being somebody who amounted to something and ended up becoming an illustrator, maybe they're, um, you know, worth something. Even as art from that time, they might even, you know, I'd, I'd say how many are here? Seven or eight or so? Yeah, well, yeah and they're originals. So, I mean, yeah, it's got to be worth something. Well, I would say even, you know, if they're framed nicely, maybe even like a hundred bucks each or something. Oh, so right. if there's seven or eight of those, that's potentially 700 bucks or 800 bucks. So that's just our first folder. That's a, that's an interesting find. Um, yeah, let's, do you guys want to put that somewhere safe? Maybe on the, I put the table over there so we could sort. Yeah, will this thing hold itself up? Let's see. Yep. Okay, let's just prop that up. Yeah. I don't want it to slide on your fingers. Okay. Or my, I don't know if that's, yeah. Newspapers. Ottawa Journal, 1945. It's so crazy going through something after so long. You know, you think about what was happening. Obviously this is uh, b b some of the last things he did after the war was over. Surrender complete. That's neat. And then there's another one here. Which one's this? Toronto. We must have been in Ontario at the time. Probably Peace at last. So the, he kept these because he had just been fighting in the war. He was probably very happy he got to go home and see his family. Well, both of those papers are from the, the, the end of the war. Yeah. May 7th. Over. Well, May 8th, 1945. Yeah. So that when was Armistice? May 7th? Yep. Yeah. May 7th and 8th are the, that's when it was all done. That's why I say peace at last. It was, that's historical all by itself. Personal art orders and instructions. What's this? This looks like it's military. It's a list of small arms. Bicycle tray pattern parts, peculiar parts. So what, data on equipments and guns and mortars. This is all military documents. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like maybe he was in charge of ordering or- Ordnance. Um, yeah, or like ammunition. Department of National Defense. 1945, July 9th, Pacific Command. So this is all stuff that has to do with these. Maybe these are top secret documents. Okay. Well, they would have been at the time. They definitely would have wanted enemy hands to get a hold of this stuff, knowing you know how many guns a person's buying and how much they're spending on their defense. Major General J. H. McQueen. Oh, I see. It's like an org chart. Yeah. I have to go through. You never know what's tucked in between all these little layers, too. Attention, Colonel Evans. So this is all wartime kind of secret-ish documents and memos and stuff. That's really cool. I'll have to go through that a little bit more carefully. Oh, look, yeah. Uh, oh. Canadian Active Service for Oh, there's a creepy doll. Yeah. It's ah, Abigail, would you want to play with that? I think it's meant to look like a baby. Um, it's yeah. kind of creepy. Yeah, Maybe we'll put that in the creepy pile. <laughs> Let's see. So what are these little books? King's Regulations and Orders, 1939. These are all, yeah, regulations and orders. And I guess this is probably just more military documents. I better put this in there. Oh, that's the, the actual handbooks. Oh, yeah. The do's and don'ts. 
Boy, That's there's cool. quite a lot of do's and don'ts in here. Yeah. But what rank would you have to be to have... Would everybody have had to memorize this, you think? Or would this have been for more of an officer? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Maybe somebody watching knows the answer. I know uh, they were they were accessible by all that they did. Uh, so they had to know what the rules and regulations were. So they had access, but yeah. it might have been through their through their superiors. Hey, Jason, why don't you open up this little envelope and see what's inside? What does it say on the outside first? On the other side. Oh, on the other side. Captain G R Williams. Okay. Cool. Open it up. Let's see. Captain. Honorable Minister of National Defense and the Trustees of National Gallery of Canada invite him to present the opening of the Canadian Army Art Exhibition. Oh, well, that explains why there's some drawings in there. Maybe the guy enjoyed art. That's pretty cool. Okay. And nothing. No. Crumpled up paper. Okay, hang on. But there's another level in here. This isn't it. Okay, we gotta get the tray out. Okay. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Okay. What's that? Let's oh, just wait, that. just wait. <laughs> okay, hang on. Wait. This is all... Well, this must have been all of his books and guides and... Canadian... What's Canadian Artillery Magazine, most likely. 1944. There's a bunch of them. Let's make a stack of those and see how many we have. Wow, that's something. The whole object of training is to teach the soldier how to fight and how to kill. Uh, I don't want to see this. Well, that's the truth. It's what they had to do to keep us safe. Current Affairs, Spain, Army Bureau, Current Affairs, 43. This is all documents and magazines and paraphernalia to do with the war. Uh, let's see what's in here. Oh, I see. Demand for ordnance stores. Army forms. Well, indents of, and the management of dumps. I don't mean to be immature, but I think you guys need that. Hey. You need to manage your dumps. <laughs> has to be at least one dad joke. Oh, look, there's a there's a letter in there. Captain Army, 1942. All officers and warrant officers. Issue of an accounting of arms, clothing, equipment, ordnance stores. I don't see any, there's no clothing in here. I definitely don't see, I mean, it's probably a good thing that there's no guns because we don't have our license for those types of firearms. Uh, okay, let's make a stack for all the books here and put them aside. Wow. This is gonna I be found a big stack. Uh, G.R. Williams, which was the- Oh yeah, yeah. Small arms and machine guns training guide. That's pretty neat. Uh, Traffic and transportation. This pretty much, if you needed to know, if you needed to start World War II over again, this would be a good start on how to uh, manage ordinance, I think. Training memorandums. Military law for Canadian officers. This guy really like to study. Look, there's even, you know, like original uh, letters and letterhead that are unused since the war sitting here. It's in perfect condition. You know, somebody who collects this kind of stuff might... Well, let's see, this is signed. It's so oh, signed by the, the fellow who, whose trunk this was. Military law. We're going to have to go through all these little papers here and see what we have. Well, let's get cracking and just make some piles, and then we'll go through them. Oh, and every time I see something kind of interesting in there, I feel like I have to take it out and have a look. Art. Canadians for the use of Canadian affairs. What's this? You were saying, Stephen, the group of seven, a lot of them, uh... Yeah, they used to present their art at military museums. Art in war and after, when we think has resources. Why do Nazis burn books? Is there a risk? The notion that art is just party. Hmm. So they're speaking of the importance of art. You know, it's pretty interesting that this was um, a military-issued, you know, Canadian affairs piece. They found it important enough. And this is printed during the war. They wanted to maintain and keep keep our what's, art safe. What's the silver thing in the corner? Okay, they want to know. It's a bomb! It's a bell. 
Oh, it's probably made by his kid. Oh, I don't know. It, maybe it was something that um, maybe they when the war was won, maybe he made this out of whatever they had lying around to uh, celebrate. I feel like power for prosperity. Prairie provinces. What's this one? People on the land. Fewer children. The population problem. Um, too late for us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm happy with the amount of children I currently have, but I wonder what they said. What can be done? Look at the happy children at the bottom. Oh, look, they have a family of five. Oh my goodness. Because there were no, remember all the men were fighting. No, a lot of the women were too. Before they went, I understand from before they went to, on service, they were each issued. They were each issued pocket Bibles. Yeah, well, that could very well be. It very well could be that. Yeah, that's, I mean, it looks like he went through it. It definitely has wear, and you can see the thumb marks on it, so he's used it. There's actually a couple little leather-bound books in here. I wonder if we're going to find any uh, top-secret notes or anything. Corporal to Field Officer, 5th Edition. Lieutenant Colonel Langford. It's kind of neat. Training. And there's uh, Christmas ornaments. The old glass ones. Looks like a lot of them are missing, but there's a few in there. A few broken ones. Probably had to spend Christmas away from home. Log books. So there is uh, just a ton of vintage paraphernalia and magazines and brochures and a lot of it... Um, these, uh, you were saying, Melissa, that they say you can't, weren't supposed to show them to anybody. Yeah, not to be published. Um, like this one, it's um, parachuting is a career. Um, well, I've heard that has its ups and downs. So there are just a pile of these old war brochures, paraphernalia, handouts. So you can see that this fellow was really involved in uh, spreading the information, getting the uh, troops notified. Uh, and these are marked as being um, not to be published. You know, these aren't things that were given to the people at home. These were meant for, um, for officers um, or for people that were in official positions, it says. So pretty neat stuff. We're gonna go through and just see how many of uh, the different piles of these we have. So we're just gonna start sorting. Okay, so Jason, what are you excited to look at? Okay, uh, uh, okay he found a file folder and he uh, what he thinks it's full of money. I don't think it's full of money, but technical branch procedure. A napkin. A napkin. Where was he? He was at the Commodore, so that must have been a restaurant that he stopped at, probably when he was overseas. I saw there was a couple. Um, napkins in here just were keepsakes I guess of places he went to I'll put it back in for now yeah these are all training manuals and um, all sorts of things but you have to think that if the average um, you know little booklet or manual is even worth five or ten dollars each which they probably are realistically maybe some are worth more and there's maybe you know a hundred or more then that's well over a thousand dollars worth of stuff but I mean the history here is what's really important what's really neat letters this one's kind of neat Notes on Japanese Army Tactics and Countermeasures. Not to be published. 1942. And it would, I presume, give them tips on how to, uh, how to fight when they're fighting the Japanese in the Pacific. Night attack, the plan. This is kind of neat stuff, really. And this was kind of cool. This is the telephone directory from the National Defense Department for the Army from 1945. So that's got everybody's phone numbers and names and ranks and everything in here. So if a person really wanted to do, um, you know, some investigating, this is probably great if you were uh, looking up your family heritage or wanted to know, um, you know, I can see there's names similar to my own last name in here. Really, really cool piece. You know, uh, this is, you know, anybody really of rank, I guess that was in the uh, the Army in National Defense back in 45. Really cool. Elements of Training and Leadership Illustrated 1937. When you look inside, it's kind of little uh, cartoons almost showing the right and wrong way for uh, carrying out a battle. There's all sorts of things in here. Firing machine guns. Um, the vehicle T is correct on the traffic continue. So even you know, how to stop when the troops are getting out of a truck. 
this is really neat. I've never seen anything quite like this before. Very neat, like rules of the road. That's a cool piece. Some helpful tips. Know your enemy weapons. The Japanese Nambu 6.5, and then it tells you exactly. They've obviously captured some and gave some information out. So I'm guessing this fellow was in the Pacific for most of his tour. You know, and some of these field manuals come in handy for guys that are collectors now because you can get the breakdown of how the guns come apart, uh, how they work and operate. So if somebody's a collector of military firearms, a book like this is a really nice companion piece for their collection. So although I didn't find any bars of gold or anything like that, there's a lot of history in this case. And it's pretty amazing to see, you know, from him uh, getting enlisted to learning how to fire his first gun. And then, uh, you know, things like the, uh, the train, um, we think from the late forties, he's coming home and there's nothing in here newer than 1946. So this really is a journey of a um, young Canadian officer during World War II, um, surviving the war, going through the war and then coming home. Um, just outstanding that something like this still is, has been sealed and sitting in a house all these years makes you wonder what else is out there but I'm um, pretty privileged to feel like uh, I got to be the guy to go through all this stuff really really neat so there was just a pile of cool literature inside of this trunk that hasn't seen the light of day and it smells like it hasn't seen the light of day it's pretty musty in there since 1946 but I'd say my favorite things by far were these original little sketches wartime sketches from 1945 I just love them, they're fantastic, and you know, I think that these are probably, in terms of value and us having a store, I think this is where the value is in this unit for us, um, let alone all the other uh, magazines and paraphernalia. It's, you know, um, I did have to pay up for it, but it's a pretty cool collection of stuff, and if I didn't have the art, I don't think I'd be as thrilled, but this is a really good find. So thanks again for tuning in on another adventure of ours. Uh, I hope you like it. Whenever we find something cool like this that hasn't been seen in years, on occasion we come across really interesting and rare finds. So if you haven't subscribed, you should hit the button and check us out. You can also find us online at curiosityedmonton.ca. We're on Facebook and Instagram as well, where you can find us, follow us, contact us, and see some of the items that we have for sale, as we are an actual store. Um, so we do sell everything that we find. Um, yeah, so glad you guys came along for the visit. We'll see you all soon. and. Bye for now.